Hey everyone, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Justin, and today I'm gonna to be talking about what I would change about the NHL if I was placed in charge or to become the commissioner or whoever the decision maker is. Um, some of these changes, not everybody will agree with, and I'm not saying that all these changes are correct or gonna make a really big difference about the NHL, but they're things that me personally, I think would definitely help the league um, I've been watching a lot of games recently all around the league and, and really been brainstorming and thinking about how does the NHL compare to other major sports leagues? Why are they underperforming? Why are they seen the way that they're seen in some of those smaller markets? Obviously, the NA NHL has some very successful markets, but some of them just aren't succeeding and they're looking to expand and I don't know where to go from here. So these are some changes that I would make if I were placed in charge tomorrow. Before I go any further, if you do like this content, whether you agree with my takes, if you disagree, first of all, I'd love to hear your opinions. Again, if you think that they're bad, let me know. If you agree with them, let me know down in the comments below. But click like, subscribe. There's gonna be lots more hockey content coming out in the near future. All right, so change number one, uh, it's gonna be a few changes around this one subject and that is the current playoff structure. I don't agree with it whatsoever. I do not like it and a few parts about that. First of all, it's not long enough because it doesn't have enough teams. Right now, there are 32 teams in the NHL and only 16 of them make the playoffs. 50% of the league. 50% of the league. That means that 50% of the league does not have any postseason revenue. We're talking about ticket sales. We're talking about broadcast revenue. We're talking about any marketing and promotion that goes on in the postseason. We're talking about concessions. We're talking about postseason apparel. There is so much revenue to be made, especially in some of the bigger markets that are just fully lost because half of the league is out. And I wanna say that 16 teams have been making the playoffs ever since there's only 22 teams in the NHL. and. So as we continue to add teams, there should be more teams in the playoffs. Now, I don't know exactly what that looks like. It could mean nine on each side, 10 on each side. It could mean buys. It could mean play-in series like we had sort of in the bubble situation. Whatever that solution is, I'm not gonna give one specific one. There needs to be more teams making the playoffs. Again, the more teams in the playoffs means the more revenue that you have after the season. And with that said, we've got 82 games and that just seems like far too long without any real meaningful, meaningful games unless you're really down the stretch looking to push into a playoff spot. But 82 games and then, you know, only 16 teams play in a little tournament for the Stanley Cup. I want to decrease the regular season and some people might not like that because obviously we want to get as much hockey as we can get but we want to get as many meaningful hockey games as we can get so what i would do is take the 82 game schedule and reduce it to about 62 to 65 games and that would decrease the regular season by at least a month maybe two and then you use that time to build in play in series you use that time to build out the postseason to be longer more exciting more meaningful and you also eliminate throughout the regular season the need for back-to-backs condensing the schedule when it's not necessary it'll get the players more rested less again fatigue uh less injuries from the back-to-backs and not to mention the fact that games will become a little bit more meaningful for fans as well when there's less of them, they're a little bit more spread out. It gets you a little bit more excited for game day, even just as a fan watching a broadcast, than it would, you know, having games back to back or four games a week or whatever it may be. So again, reduce the schedule to 62 games, increase the postseason, increase the amount of games that are played, the amount of teams that are playing. And I think that will bring in a lot more revenue and a lot more eyes as well. Speaking of the playoffs, I would also change the structure because as we have it right now, the first seed in each division plays one of the wildcard spots and then number two and number three in the division play each other. That's not a good structure at all. I understand what the NHL was trying to do in trying to create divisional rivalries, have teams play the same teams every year. To me, that just becomes so stale. And as a recurring hockey fan, it makes the playoffs not as fun to watch and maybe it would get some new viewers if you consistently have like the battle of pennsylvania pittsburgh and philadelphia always matching up in the playoffs but that seems to happen a lot as it is you don't need to force it and by forcing it again it's become too stale not to mention the fact that it, it's not fair in a lot of a lot of times a lot of instances we've got teams that are 
ready and capable of winning a Stanley Cup being eliminated in the first round. And yeah, you'll have upsets like that, like Columbus did to the Tampa Bay Lightning just a few years back. But look at last year, for instance, when Tampa played for Florida in the first round. Those are two teams that could have made the Stanley Cup or won the Stanley Cup, and one of them eventually did. But Florida Panthers would have gone far in the playoffs if they were not up against Tampa in the first round. And yeah, I'll tie the Leafs in here. I'm a diehard Leafs fan. I am biased. But it's looking like over a 90% chance that the Leafs are going to have to face either Tampa or Florida in the first round of this year's playoffs. And aside from the fact that those two teams are two of the best teams in the entire NHL, you could have three teams in the top five in the entire NHL playing each other. One of them's eliminated. But, I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense for me why that would be the case and why you can't just have a reseeded 1v8 2v7, 3v6, 4v5. It just makes it make so much more sense instead of having some divisions that are clearly weaker than others and teams making the playoffs when other teams in better divisions aren't making the playoffs. And then you have some of the best teams in the league getting on the first round. Again, it impacts the fans. It impacts the TV viewership. It impacts the quality of the NHL because the finals might not have the two best teams at all. It just, it impacts everything. So I would definitely make changes to the playoff format. Stepping away from the playoff talk, I do want to talk about the All-Star Game. As a die-hard hockey fan, as someone that will watch any hockey game that's on TV whatsoever, I hate watching the NHL All-Star Game. It is such a gimmick. It's not fun. It's not exciting. The players don't care about it. The players that are there sometimes are people that are just voted in as a troll because the NHL has made it some sort of, I don't know, like vote to get into the All-Star Game. Everything about it needs to change. Get away from the three-on-three, -three, get away from the vote, get away from uh, all the gimmick that's around it, and make it a competitive and serious hockey game. And now more than ever, we're seeing the need around the entire hockey world to see a best-on-best -best hockey tournament, let's say. Uh, we saw it with the Olympic talk. Obviously, the NHL is not going to the Winter Olympics in China anymore. And people are very upset because this was our opportunity to see McDavid and McKinnon and Crosby all play on Team Canada and Matthews play with Kane and some really good European superpowers. And now we don't get that best on best tournament just like we didn't have it in uh, 2018. So then we look, what's the next best option? Well, the last best option was the World Cup of Hockey, which we had. And that was really exciting. I actually really enjoyed watching the World Cup of Hockey, which I did not expect. And that was a case where we could see some of these young guns, Matthews, McKinnon, and McDavid play some serious hockey on the same team as a young guns team. It was so exciting. But the league hasn't been following through with that year after year or every four years or two years or however long that they were going to do it. They need to bring that back. But regardless, at the very level of it, we want some best on best hockey where it's serious, it means something, and we get to see, again, the best play the best. And that could happen every single year in the All-Star game if we just put a little bit more effort into it. I say you take the best coaches and the best general managers from each of the two conferences to build the best team. And no, that might not mean the best players or the most skilled players. I mean the best team from each conference. Imagine the likes of McDavid and Dreisaitl and McKinnon going up against Crosby and Ovechkin and Matthews. That's what you could have with an East versus West. You do it 5v5 and you put something on the line, not just money. The players don't really care about the money anymore. It's insignificant to them. They all get paid crazy amounts. So what you do is, I don't know, bring it back to when the winner of that all-star game is the conference that gets home ice in the Stanley Cup Finals. I think that's fair. And I think that's something that the players will truly care about winning. Whether it's that or something else, you need to put something on the line that makes this game meaningful and have these players play with players that they won't otherwise have the opportunity to do so in a competitive environment. And I get you don't want injuries, you don't want any of that, but think about the impact that this would have on viewership, on getting new fans. I think that far outweighs the possibility of someone getting hurt because it, it's not overly likely. Um, and I get that perspective, but again, we're trying to grow the NHL here, do something that's going to impact the overall value of the league. That's a big way to do it. As far as the skills competition goes, 
The skills competition should not contain only players that are in that all-star game. So you build the all-star game around the best players and the best teams you could possibly build from each conference to go up against one another. The all-star should, or sorry, the skills competition should be purely skills competition. I want to see if you think that you are, they could be a bottom six defenseman, but they have if they have the hardest shot in the league, they should be in the hardest shot competition. If you are the fastest skater in the league, damn, I'd like to see Ilya Mikheyev participate in the fastest skater competition. He shouldn't be in the all-star game, but he should be in the fastest skater competition. I'd like to see an all-star skills competition that has anybody eligible to get those best skills available in that contest. I would also get rid of all the gimmicky things that they've tried adding in lately, uh, shooting pucks from the stands and the relays. No, keep it simple. Keep it to what they, the things that people want to see. That's like the, the speed contest, the, the fastest skater, the, the hardest shot, shot accuracy. And then that's also the opportunity to do something like a shootout. Uh, get it away from the NHL regular season. And that's the next thing I'll be talking about. Keep it for the skills contest and keep those as the things that people really want to see. And yeah, I just said it there. The next thing I would change is get rid of the shootout in the regular season. It just isn't fun. It isn't exciting. It is a skills contest. That's all it is. It's not hockey. It's a skills contest. That's why you put it in the all-star game and keep it there. And in the regular season, you move three on three to either 10 minutes or continuous overtime. Three on three, and I'll give them credit for it, is the best thing that the NHL has introduced lately. And I can guarantee new spectators that don't really watch hockey, if they watch a three on three overtime, they are going to be hooked because it's just nonstop action. It is so fun and so exciting. I don't think it should ever end. My concern is that if you make it 10 minutes, you'll most likely have a winner, uh, a goal scorer. Um, but I do fear that some teams will come up with the strategy where they will play very conservative, pretty much keep away. I've seen some teams do it um, to try to force shootouts. In this case, we wouldn't have a shootout after the fact. I guess you would just end it with a tie. My fear is that teams would be okay with that and just try to rag the puck. Um, so that's why I think continuous three on three overtime teams will just try to get that goal sooner or later. They'll take those extra risks. If they know it's going to be continuous, especially if they've got a game the next day or whatever the case may be, they're going to try to get that goal really fast. Gives the other team some opportunities to come back the other way. Three on three is so exciting. Keep it, expand it, move it forward away with the shootout. This next one, some people might agree with some people might not. But I think that the NHL should heavily invest in the EA Sports NHL video games. And they've been getting there. They've been trying to promote it. They've collaborated a lot recently. The NHL video game has actually taken a big step forward by getting the rights to the IIHF. But the NHL needs to add more funds to help, I don't know, support a video game that is actually fun to play. Because let's be frank here, I play the NHL video game all the time. It's, it's not a good representation of hockey. It drives me nuts. It needs so much work, but the community just isn't big enough. And if you look at the case of NBA 2K or FIFA or even Madden, those are video games that could in some cases drive people to the league through the game as opposed to the other way around. I think in the NHL, their mindset is that if you're a hockey fan, well, then here's the game for you. Whereas I think it's, it, it, what it really should be is here's a really, really fun video game, really well done, will, really well produced. It's got no limits as far as the demographic it can go after. It would attract far more people. And by people playing that game, they'll fall in love with hockey and start watching the real NHL. I think that needs to be the perspective and it's more of an investment. You might not make the money back right away because, well, like I said, the NHL fan base, uh, as far as the video game goes, is just not the size as some other video games out there. But if you put the investment in and get more people playing it and actually make a really strong video game, you might generate some new fans that are going to watch the real NHL. So that's something I would heavily consider. And the last thing, and this is probably the biggest thing, and I know the NHL has already started addressing it, so kudos to them for this, but that is NHL fantasy leagues and overall betting. I know they've been making some partnerships and, and trying to get into that space, but I was really thinking about why is it that NFL fans and football fans really enjoy watching any football game that's on TV outside of the entertainment value. I'm not a huge NFL fan myself, so I can't personally relate to this, but I would have to think that if you are, let's say, a Buffalo Bills fan, I know that you're still watching all the football games that are on on a Sunday or a Monday. 
And that's because of a few reasons. Obviously, you're a big fan of the sport and you want to watch other games, but in most cases, it's fantasy football. You've got some money on the line. You've got something that you have to cheer for, regardless if that's your team that you cheer for or not. You've got something to make you watch those games. And in the NHL, most of the people that I know and most of the people that I talk to will only watch games of the team that they cheer for. And if there's another game on, especially if it's like a smaller market game, there's no way that they're tuning in. I personally love watching every game, but I know that having some, some money on the line, some fantasy hockey, some bets down, that is what is going to drive viewership from other, um, I guess, other fan bases to some games, especially, again, those smaller market games, you need to push eyes onto those. And so I don't know what exactly needs to be done. I just know that you need to heavily invest in the fantasy hockey and the sports gambling space. It will draw new viewers in and hopefully can attract some people that just like betting on sports that are football fans and don't really care about hockey. Well, if you make it a really fun, exciting, interactive way of gambling and putting something down on hockey games, maybe it draws some new eyes from that perspective too. So there it is. There are just a few things that I would immediately change in the NHL. Maybe I'll come out with a part two of this because I do have some other ideas, but I don't want to make this too long. I know I've rambled far too long so far. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, if you agree, if you disagree, let me know in the comments down below. Um, in the meantime, I'll continue watching it for the NHL and trying to brainstorm some more things that I would change in the NHL. Uh, I really want this, this league to succeed. Uh, currently, it just does not do enough to compare to some of the other big four leagues in North America. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you would change if you were in charge. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.